Namaste yogis, welcome to your mat. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is Foundations uh, Level 1 class. Uh, my name is Abigail, for those of you who are new to me. And the focus for class today is a nice adventure around the hips. So uh, before I get into that, I'd like to suggest a few props. Um, blanket is always nice, something uh, to sit on, maybe padding for knee down business. We don't have a ton of that today. Um, but you may want that nearby. And then something that would work as a strap. This could be a really long sock if you don't have a, a formal yoga strap, um, a dog leash, maybe a belt from your closet. So um, especially if you have tight hamstrings, that, that might come in handy. Um, so if you need to grab anything, now would be the time to do that. And uh, like I said, we're gonna take a little trip around the hips. So our peak pose is a standing balancing pose that requires um, a lot of hip work, uh, especially when we stand, we really recruit the glutes to do that. So um, we'll sort of get into hip flexors, the inner thighs, our adductors, the outer hips, our external rotators, and um, abductor muscles, as well as the hamstrings. So let's get started. And I'd like for you to actually start in a belly down Shavasana. So you can come down to rest your uh, whole front body on your mat. And depending on how it feels in your head and your neck, you may just rest your head on the backs of your hands. You could stack your hands. You could also turn a cheek, maybe one way or the other, depending on what's more comfortable for your neck. It may be possible that uh, arms down by your sides might also be comfortable, and then you can turn a cheek one way or the other. So just allow for yourself to come down to this prone position and we'll take just a few breaths to settle. And so just organize your physical structure and allow your belly, the front of your body to get soft. I encourage you to close your eyes, relax your tongue, relax your jaw. And just allow for the leg bones to be heavy. Let your feet be really easy. And we'll cultivate a little bit of pause as we initiate class. So just working with the pause between the breath. Inhale fully, maybe a little pause at the top of the inhale. And then exhale fully. Mm, find a little pause at the bottom of your exhale. And continue to keep your face, your jaw soft as you bring in the breath connection, bringing breath into our awareness. You may even experience a little feedback against the earth as you breathe. Let's take about three more rounds of breath here. Just grounding in preparation for practice, and allowing us to still, to steady ourselves. the center if it is turned to the side and if your arms are not up in front of you please bring them there and we'll take a little bit of an upper back stretch this will come in handy later so from your belly you'll slide your right arm underneath your body so that the right palm faces up outside of the left of your mat so you'll be on your belly but it's essentially like you are laying on your arm this is what we're going to do so visually seated this is kind of what it looks like so you'll sweep that right arm across and see if you can get that right palm to face up, back of the hand to face down. And then you'll turn yourself back towards your right arm. And I like to rest my, my head on the back of my left hand. If the floor feels really far and it feels really intense already, just keep your head lifted. 
and allow for the weight of your body to open up that upper back right lung, upper back right shoulder blade. It is um, likely that it's not the most comfortable position in the world, so do your best to breathe. And then allow for the upper back to get some space as you pause and as much stillness as you can. And let your legs be soft. And let your body be heavy on the inner right arm. Let's take three more breaths. bottom of your third exhale make a skillful exit so you'll slowly lift your head you can use your left hand arm to sort of push and then pass through center and we'll switch the other way so this time the left arm threads through so underneath the right arm left palm faces up outside of the right side of your mat and then you'll do your best to turn your torso back towards your mat your face back towards your left outer arm Maybe rest your head on the back of your right hand. If that's too much, stay upright. And allow for the weight of your body to open up that upper back left shoulder. And put some breath into the back of your left lung. Let your legs be soft and find your breath. Notice if you tighten in your jaw or your tongue. You've got three more breaths here. See if you can be easy in the face, easy in the breath. When your third exhale is complete, you feel even. Make a slow, skillful exit. Sweep your left arm out from underneath you. And just momentarily find the sphinx pose. So spread your fingers, your arms will make the number 11 with your elbows underneath your shoulders. Let's start to turn on the back of the body, so the glutes, the hamstrings, press the tops of the feet down and squeeze your kneecaps up into your thighs to firm your leg bones. Push down with your elbows and lift through your chest and your heart. See if you can zip your navel off the mat, belly to spine. In this shape, can you find deep breath? Hmm. Bottom of your third exhale, slow lower. And we'll just flip on over to supine. So please find your back. You'll land on your back with your feet on the earth and your knees bent. <clears throat> For now, you can rest your hands on your belly. You're welcome to rest them elsewhere as well. <clears throat> and then we'll lift the legs. So we want to bring the feet uh, about, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought, shins parallel to the ceiling and knees right over your hips. We'll pull the low belly down here. And then let's, let's soften the feet as well so that the only sort of isolated movement we're concerned about is the belly. Again, pull the low belly down, almost like you want to flatten your low back to the mat. And then if this is, does not create enough sensation in your core, you'll take your legs a little bit further away. Breathe. Relax your feet to isolate just the core muscles, so the only thing that's working here. Stay if this is plenty or go a little bit further, knees a little bit further away. Here's your last three breaths. Pull the low belly down. Bottom of your third breath. Bring the knees back to center. You can give yourself a little hug, a little squeeze if you want. And then let's add on. So knees again will lift right over the hips. This time you'll cross your knees. So I kind of say this as like 
you're gonna sit in a chair, um, classy lady, have tea. So we wanna cross at the knees. It's not figure four, stack the knees as best you can. And then squeeze your knees together. Again, soften through the feet. So my legs are crossed here. And then same thing, I'm gonna reach the toes away, knees away, until I feel the core clip on. Squeeze the legs together like you're trying to bust a yoga block between your inner thighs. Pull your low belly down. Squeeze your legs more towards one another. See if you could reach a little bit further away, almost like your toes would touch the very back edge of your mat. Last big breath, pull the low belly down, squeeze your legs. Bottom of your breath, you'll come through center and we'll switch. Left leg on right, so cross left knee on top of right knee. Squeeze your knees together so that'll firm the inner thigh muscles. Let your feet relax. And then pull the low belly down and start to experiment with how far you tip the knees away, toes away, until you feel the core click on. Squeeze your legs together really strong. Firm your inner thigh muscles. Maybe go a little bit further. Your toes might hover slightly above your mat. Last big breath, pull the low belly down. Nice job. Release that. Uncross, feet on the earth. Pause. This time your feet will stay as they are and the arms will start to join in. So take your arms straight up, spread your fingers, your palms will face one another. Now this whole sequence is really lots of rights and lefts, so it's going to test our ability to know what limb is what. Cross your right arm on top of your left arm, so you have an X right above your gaze. Now, that might be enough, and you'll hold the outer shoulders so your elbows point to the ceiling. If possible, maybe you could wrap at your wrist and cross at the palms for eagle arms. So either way, crossing at elbows and wrist or crossing at the elbows, hold the outer shoulders. Now, inhale, squeeze your arms together. Pull your right arm to the right and your left arm to the left. And any amount, go slow, really slow. Start to stretch your fingers up and over your head. It may not take much for you to feel something, so go slow, be mindful, squeeze your arms together, and breathe. Like you want to touch the mat above your head, last big breath, squeeze your arms together more. Bottom of your exhale, bring the elbows back up over the shoulders. And then we'll go other side. Release your clasp. Arms go straight up. Palms face. Spread your fingers. And then this time we cross and make an X with the left arm on top. So my elbows are crossed. And then hold the outer shoulders with the palms. Or cross at elbows and cross at wrists. You decide. Now, wherever you're at, squeeze your arms together. Pull your left arm to the left and your right arm to the right. And really slowly start to reach the tips of your fingers up and overhead. Likely to feel some sensation in the left underarm, left outer shoulder, maybe that right deeper arm. That's kind of where I'm at today. Breathe. Mm, squeeze a little more with your arms. Take one more big breath as you reach up and overhead. Mm, bottom of your exhale. Don't let me rush you. You'll release the reach, release the arms. Pause. All right, let's create those two movements together. So, starting with the organization of your legs again. Bring the knees over the hips, shins parallel to the earth momentarily, and we'll cross at the knees. So find your knee on knee, and you can again relax through your feet. You can let your feet be soft, but squeeze your inner thighs together. Then, Right arm, left arm go up, palms face for a moment, and you'll cross your right elbow on top of your left arm. So you have an X right above your gaze. And then again, you could, uh, I'm sorry, fix that. Right arm goes under, my apologies. So the left arm is on top here when we have our right leg on top. Hold at the outer shoulders or wrap at the wrists. Squeeze your arms, squeeze your legs. Take an inhale breath and start to reach your fingertips up and your toes away. 
Listen carefully as you exhale, lift your head, lift your elbows, like your knees and your elbows would marry, scoop up. Inhale, reach your tips of your fingers up and your toes away, squeeze your arms, squeeze your legs, exhale, scoop your belly, elbows, try to touch your knee. Again, inhale, reach up and over, toes reach away, squeeze your legs, Exhale, scoop your belly, knees and elbows, try to touch. Two more, inhale, reach. Beak overhead with your eagle arms, toes away. Exhale, scoop from the belly, lift up. Last one, inhale, reach as you squeeze your arms together, your legs together. Exhale, scoop up. Maybe you can get one more vertebrae off your mat. Hmm. And then release. Unwind, arms, legs, pause. Find your breath. All right, let's do the other side, our last core work here. So hips come, or knees come rather, over your hips, soften your feet and cross your left leg on top of your right leg. So squeeze the knees together from your inner thighs. Join in your arms. So to start, palms face, reach up, and then this time we take the left arm under the right arm. Make your X, hold your outer shoulders, or find a cross at the wrist. So left leg is on top, left arm is under. Squeeze everything, and with an inhale breath, reach your arms overhead, your toes away. As you exhale, scoop from your belly, lift your chin to your chest, and round up. Inhale, reach up and overhead with the fingers, the toes away. Exhale, scoop your belly, lift up, round your spine. Inhale, go slower than you want to. Exhale, squeeze like your elbows could touch your left knee. Couple more. Inhale, reach away. Exhale, scoop up. Let's do two more. Inhale, reach. Squeeze your arms together. Squeeze your legs together. Exhale, scoop up. Last one. You've got it. Inhale, reach. Squeeze everything to the midline. Exhale, scoop. Like you could lift another vertebrae off the mat. And then release. Mm. Unwind. Soften. You can pause in stillness. You're also welcome to take any movement that calls to you. Find your breath. Great, so from here, you'll grab a strap if you have one or whatever prop you've got to mimic a strap. And we'll take the strap over the ball mount of the right foot. So you can make a loop if you want or Take just the uh, tool that you have and hold with both of your hands on either side of the strap. Extend your right leg to the ceiling for Supta Padahustasana 1. Now we want the strap over the ball mound of the feet, so not in the arch, not in the heel, and straight arms. So allow for your arm bones to be really long. That means you may hold closer or further away from your toes. Now push up through your right heel, spread your right toes. Like you could see the ceiling above you between each of your toes. And then as you firm your leg, bury the back of your right hip into the mat. So let your right half of your pelvis get really heavy. If the hamstrings are really tight, of course, a bend in the knee is A-OK. -okay, or take your strap further away from you. That will relax a little bit of the strain in the back of the right thigh. Wherever you're at. Play with straightening your left leg. So push your left heel forward. If you've got a straight left leg on the earth, so left heel is grounded, push away, spread left toes. And take two more big breaths. Legs are doing most of the work here. Upper body's pretty soft. Good, and then from here, you'll hold whatever you've got in your left hand. If you're holding without a strap behind the right thigh, this will still work. 
<coughs> Excuse me. So holding with left hand or maintaining whatever you've got, you'll start to cross your right leg to the left. I'm crossing the midline a little bit. So I'm not going very far, maybe about six, eight inches. And my right hand is coming to this outer right hip to help roll the outer right hip away. You may get quite a sensation along the outer right line of your leg. That will come in handy later. Gently pull your belly down and to the right a little bit. Firm your left leg if it's still straight on the earth. Firm your right leg, maybe take it a little further to the left. Here's your last breath. Mm, good, and then slowly release right leg back to center. You can bend the right leg, bend the left leg. Take a breath. Second side, strap goes over the ball mound of the left foot. You could interlace your hands behind the left thigh as well. And just listen to your hamstrings. Bend your left knee as you need. Regardless of bent or straight legs, spread your left toes and hold the straight arms if you can. Press up through the left heel. Again, that action is possible with the bent left knee, like you want to stand on the ceiling. And then bury the back of your left hip into the earth. So left half of your pelvis really rooted and heavy. If you added in the bottom leg, please straighten your right leg. And if it is straight, push through the heel. So fire through the legs, spread the toes. Allow for softness in your breath. Here's your last two. Firm your thighs if you can, especially the bottom one. Top one's okay to stay bent. All right, and then the other piece. Hold with the right hand only. And then bring your left hand to your outer left hip. Start to cross your left leg over your right leg so you're headed towards the right side of your mat, but don't go too far. We want to be mindful and curious about that outer left hip sensation. Use your left hand to kind of nudge your left outer hip away from you. I kind of like to dig my left thumb into that left hip flexion that is in this pose to lengthen the left side waist. Spread your toes, firm your belly down and a little to the left as you bring your left leg, maybe just a hair more to the right. Last breath. Nice work, everybody. Slowly release back to center. You can pause in a position that's comfortable for you. Set your strap to the side. And however you would like to transition is up to you. You could pull your knees to your chest and rock a little bit on your spine if you want. You could also roll to one side and press yourself up. So we'll find the uh, tabletop position here. So we won't be here for too long. If your knees are sensitive, you could pull your blanket into your setup um, if you'd like. But again, we're not here for too long, so I'll leave that up to you. Find tabletop position, spread your fingers, put the hands right underneath your shoulders, and then please tuck your toes underneath you if that's possible. That will help in getting the feet open a little bit. And then with an inhale breath, we'll take some cat and cow. Lift your chest, lift your tail, arch your spine. As you exhale, push the mat away, bring your chin to your chest, and puff around spine to ceiling. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, Lift the tail, cow pose. Exhale, do the opposite. Push the mat away so the shoulders protract. Scoop your tail in, round your spine. Couple more, inhale, lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, push, scoop the belly, round in. One more, inhale, lift the chest, project your heart up, lift your tail. Exhale, push the mat away, puff the spine, scoop your belly. And then allow for the next breath to bring you back to a neutral spine, so sort of that sweet spot between cat and cow. And walk your knees back a couple inches to lengthen the distance between your wrists and your knees. Push with your hands, spread your fingers, definitely tuck your toes if you haven't already, and then lift your knees, push up and back, downward facing dog. 
Now I taught down dog last week, really breaking all of the pieces down. So see what you can remember about making a good down dog. Feel free to move. I like to shake my head yes and no. Relax through the neck. Maybe lift through the heels. Bend into one knee at a time. Just kind of pedal it out a little bit. And then let's find a really strong and still downward facing dog. So take a, take a peek at your hands. Fingers spread nice and wide. Make sure your pointer fingers are parallel to one another and then press down through all of your finger pads. Look at your toes as you relax your head and your neck and spread your toes. If you can, lift your kneecaps to your thighs, firm your legs. A-OK -okay to have some bend in the knees, right? So that'll support your hamstrings if the straight legs is uncomfortable. Push down and forward as you send your hips up and back. Breathe. Listen carefully, feet go as wide as your yoga mat. So you're in a really wide downward facing dog. This might feel pretty good for more space. So widen your feet, my toes are even hanging off my mat. Push more down, more forward, relax your head. And then push off with your hands and come back to the back of your mat in this really wide fold. Now, I'm gonna bend my knees quite a bit so that my fingertips can get to the earth. Relax the head, relax the neck. You're welcome to keep this bend in the knees for sure. As we inhale, hands to shins for wide Ardha Uttanasana. Press your hands into your shins, lift your navel to your spine. And no rounding of the shoulders forward, roll them back. Lift through the heart. Take one more big breath. Exhale, relax. Forward fold, bend your knees as much as you need, maybe fingertips on the earth. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, hands to shins, Ardha Uttanasana, roll the fronts of your shoulders back. Like you're squeezing a pencil between your shoulder blades on your back body. Lift your navel and look slightly forward. One more big inhale. Exhale, soften, release. And then as ninja style as you can, you'll crawl your hands back out, downward facing dog. If you like the wide dog, you're welcome to keep your feet as wide as your mat. You're also welcome to bring them back to hip distance, whatever works for you today. Spread your fingers, spread your toes, any amount of bend in the knees is A-OK. -okay. Take another big breath. Good, and then this time we'll walk forward. So I'm gonna maintain that really wide stance. You, of course, have the choice to narrow if you want. Relax your head and your neck. Bend your knees as much as you need to touch the floor with your fingertips. And then inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, bent or straight legs, lengthen your spine. Zip your navel up and project your heart forward. Take another breath in. Exhale, deep fold, relax your head. Last one, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, press the hands into the shins, roll the fronts of your shoulders back, lift your tail, lift your heart, inhale. Exhale, soften, forward fold. From here, you can heel toe your feet together a little closer, bend your knees more, hands to hips, and slowly rise to stand. All right, find Tadasana here. I'm going to turn and face you just for some visual assistance. But find Tadasana with the feet, the distance of your outer hips. And take a look at your feet and spread your toes. Lift up through the crown of your head. And we'll shift our weight over to our left leg. Inhale to lift the right leg up. Flex the right hip, the right knee, and the right ankle. Spread your right toes. You're welcome to move to a wall during our balancing series here. But lift your chest, hug the left outer hip in. When you feel stable, feel ready, start to open your right leg to the right. So we're asking all sorts of things of our hips in this balancing action for sure. Lengthen the inner right thigh away. Push down with the heel woo, of your left foot. And maybe bring your hands to heart center. Spread your right 
pose and breathe. Mm, with control, go slowly right leg back to center and then release right leg down. All right, let's switch. Spread your right toes, firm your right leg, hug the outer right hip in and then sweep the left leg up. So the left leg is in a 90 degree angle like you were in a lunge pose. Root down through your right heel, lift your chest, and then slowly, slower than you want to, open your left leg any amount to the left. Spread your left toes, pull your belly back, and push more through the foot on the right. Maybe bring your hands to heart center, soften your jaw, take another breath. Mm, and then back through center. Nice work, release. Good, stay standing, hip distance again. Check those toes and spread them wide. Shift your weight over to your right leg. Again, your strong base, so hug this right outer hip in. And then this time, take your left foot back behind you and make a little kickstand with your left toes. So the tendency is gonna want to be to go forward. I want you to think about going up and going back instead. Lift your left foot a couple inches off the earth behind you. You can flex or point the foot, whatever works. Firm your right leg, lift your chest. Try to think about going back. Hands to heart center if you can. And then so slow, flex your left heel and start to squeeze your left heel towards your left butt cheek. Like you're moving through honey, go slow. What's your breath doing? Soften your jaw, firm your right leg, and then re extend left leg, go straight, push through the left foot, firm the left bun, and then release. Other side. Left leg is your strong base. Hug left outer hip in. Right leg goes back. Make a little kickstand with your right foot. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift the right leg. So my right leg is straight. I'm trying to lean up and back. Pull your low ribs in. From here, really slowly start to flex your right heel and squeeze your right heel to your right butt cheek. Go slow. Breathe. Firm your left leg a lot. Squeeze your right heel in just a little bit more. Lift your chest. And then with control, re-extend right leg. Let it hover for one more breath. Firm your right buns. And then release. Bend and shake any amount through the knees. One more standing balancing to go. Hip distance in your feet, spread your toes. Weight goes over to the left leg. This time externally rotate your right hip so your right knee points off to the right diagonal of your mat. Kickstand, absolutely an option if balance is tricky with your right toes on the floor and your right heel inside your left inner ankle. Maybe you can hover at the calf below the knee or if possible, go up and above the knee. Just please do not go on your knee joint. Rikshasana. Wherever you're at in your pose, root down through your left heel. Your left glutes are the ones doing the stabilization of your pose. Lift your chest, maybe hands to heart center. And then see if you can find a little pause, a little ease. Last big breath. Firm your left leg. Steer your right knee. Open a little bit more. And then with as much control as you can, make a mindful exit, right foot down. All right, last balancing. Right leg is your base. Firm your right leg, spread your right toes. Externally rotate the left knee, and the same options apply. Find a kickstand, that's legit. Still get the opening in the hips for sure. Calf or upper inner right thigh. Now, push down through your right foot like you literally want to push a hole through the floor. Lift through your chest and nudge your left knee gently.
gently more to the left as we open that left inner thigh. Hands to heart if you feel steady. Find a soft, easy point to gaze at and breathe. Lift up through the crown of your head. Last breath, firm your right leg. Mm, nice job. With control, make an exit. And then if you're not at the top of your mat, go ahead and make your way there for some lunging. There's no knee down, so you don't need a blanket. Now, look at your feet, spread your toes. Firm your legs, hands to your hips, please. And then bend your knees a little bit and send your left leg way, way, way back so you're in a lunge. So you know that the left leg is where it needs to be when your right knee is over your right heel. If you don't step back far enough, the knee on the right won't be stacked. So that's a good indicator, right knee over right heel. Hands stay at your hips, and we've got a deep hip flexion going on in the right leg. Now, bend your left knee and hover it above the earth. Now, with the left knee bent, I want you to squeeze your left buns, squeeze your left butt cheek, and keep your buns really strong as you re-extend your left leg. Push up through your left heel. And then if you feel steady and stable, inhale, arms up, Anjaneyasana. Reach through your fingertips, open your chest, pull your navel to your spine. Sit a little deeper into the front of your right hip. Last breath, firm your back left thigh. Mm, good, exhale, release your hands to hips. You can sort of push forward, however it works, get yourself back to the top of your mat. Let's go second side, bend your knees, and left leg stays forward as we send the right leg back. Lunge on the other side. Organize, organize well. Left knee over left heel. Hands to hips, and then a little bend in your back knee, hover. You may feel a little pull on the front of your hip flexors when we do that. Then squeeze your right butt, firm your right butt cheek, and then squeeze your left or right leg really straight, firm, back leg strong. Navel to spine, inhale, arms up, Anjaneyasana. Reach through your fingertips. Extend the sides of your body, pull your navel back. Breathe, last breath. Bottom of your exhale, arms can come to hips, and you'll come back to the top of your mat. Release your arms by your sides, Tadasana. Take a pause, soften your jaw, soften your tongue. Second set of lunging, here we go. Hip distance in your feet, look at your right toes and spread them. And then bend your knees, step the left leg back for lunge on the right. Now, this time, back leg is straight already. We won't do that extra knee piece, so firm your left leg. But this time, take a look at your right toes and spread them as you pick them up. So you'll push through the ball mound of your foot and your heel and see if you can spread your toes wide and then replant them. If they don't do any of that, that's okay. Keep working at it. That's part of our balance as well. Firm back leg, navel to spine. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Take another big breath. Reach through the sides of your waist. Firm your back leg. And then release. Step forward. Pause. All right, other side, left leg stays forward, bend your knees, send the right leg back. Right leg super strong, right away, firm right bun. Pull the navel back. And then look at your left toes and see if you can lift and spread all of them. Spread from the pinky toe back to the big toe as you replant them, almost like you wanna see some mat space between your toes. Now, with the good base in your feet and your legs, lift your arms, I'm gonna ask them. Lift through the sides of your waist. Firm your back right thigh. One more big breath. Mm, 
bottom of your exhale, release. And step forward, Tadasana, release your arms. Great, third set of lunging. Right leg stays forward, send your left leg back. All the things here. So, firm your left leg, lift and temporarily spread all of your toes, make a nice wide setting for your right foot. Deep flexion in your right hip crease. And then this time, arms go straight forward. Reach your arms straight in front of you. Palms face one another. Now, take your right elbow, right arm on top of your left arm. So you have this nice X in front of you. Keep your lunge going and hold the outer shoulders with your palms or wrap at the wrists for eagle arms. Whatever you've got, squeeze. Squeeze your arms together, squeeze your left leg, lift your elbows any amount. Take another big breath. Keep your legs, inhale, reverse your arms, reach up. And then step forward, pause, nice work. Take a breath before our last side. Bend your knees. Left leg stays forward, right leg way, way back. Make a good lunge. Left knee over left heel, firm back leg. Spread your left toes really wide. Find some mat space between the toes. And then inhale, arms forward. Spread your fingers. This time, left arm on top. Make an X in front of your body. And then hold outer shoulders or wrap at the wrist, eagle arms. Wherever you're holding, squeeze your arms together and lift your elbows higher. Keep your lunge going. Keep your breath going. Last big breath cycle. Squeeze back leg, squeeze arms. Inhale. Anjana Asana, sweep your arms up. And then exhale to release. Nice job. Tadasana, relax your arms, relax your gaze. Maybe grab a drink of water. All right, from here, please turn and face the long edge of your mat. And we'll stand in the middle, facing one of the long edges of your mat with the big toes right together. All right, from here, hands to hips, bend your knees, and step really wide. So a good measure is your wingspan arms with your wrists to dangle right out the uh, side of the outer ankles. So that means you've stepped wide enough. Once you do your measure, bring your hands back to your hips and turn your right toes to face forward uh, towards the right short edge of your mat. And then bend your right knee to make the lunge shape in your right leg. Left foot stays the same. You can keep the left outer pinky foot parallel to what is now the back of your mat. And then once you've got that stance, check right knee over right heel and take your left arm long out behind you, setting up for warrior two. Take your right hand into a fist, literally squeeze your hands together, and put it outside of your right knee. Press your right knee into your fist. That'll turn on your outer right hip. Press the right knee back, 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 back into your fist. One more breath. And then release the fist for traditional warrior two. Gaze over your right fingers. Feel your torso right over your hips and push out through your left outer foot. Take one more breath. Good, inhale, straighten right leg. Turn your right toes back in, and then we'll turn the left toes out. So now my outer right foot is parallel-ish to the back of my right short edge of my mat, and my left toes are pointing left. My left knee's gonna bend like lunge. Right arm sweeps behind for the half arm in warrior two. Make a fist with your left hand and put it outside of your left knee. Press your left knee into your fist. So abduction away from the midline to turn on outer left hip and glutes. Push more, last breath. Good, and then release that 
for your two. If you're ever dressed in a two, look over your left fingers. Soften your shoulders out of your ears. Find a little pause, find a little breath. And then change, nice work. Release the left bent leg. Turn both toes to face the long edge of your mat. Bend your knees and step your feet together. Tadasana, pause. Let's repeat that and then we'll add on. Bend your knees, step wide again. Do your measure, wide measure here. Lengthen your wingspan here. Then keep your left toes, left foot as it is, hands back to hips as you turn your right toes to the right. Once again, bend your right knee deeply, right knee over right heel. And lengthen out your arms, warrior two. Take a peek at your right knee. See if it's crashing into the midline. If it is, nudge it to the right like you still had your fist to press into. Good. From here, keep your legs, left hand to hip, right forearm to right thigh. Like you're going to hold a plate and serve a platter with your right palm facing up. Push down with your right arm, right elbow, to lengthen this underside waist. And then if you feel steady, stretch your left arm up. Variation of side angle pose. Rotate your chest gently to the left. Push out through your left outer heel. And keep that outer right hip working. See if you can nudge your right knee more to the right. Last breath. Left hand to hip. Push into right foot. Straighten front leg. And we'll do the last side. Right toes turn in a bit so my outer right foot's parallel to the right short edge of my mat. And then left knee bends deeply, warrior two. Extend your arms wide. Spread your fingers, soften your shoulders. And then take a peek at your left knee. Is it crashing in? If it is, push it a little to the left. That'll ask your left outer hip to work. Take another big breath here. Firm your back right leg. And then right hand to hip, left forearm to left thigh. Push down with your left elbow to lengthen the underside waist. And then if it feels okay, stretch your right arm up. Utita Parajva Kurasana. Spin your chest gently to the right. Keep the outer left hip working. Keep your back leg really strong. Take one more breath. Bottom of your exhale. Slowly straighten left leg, turn both toes to face the long edge of your mat, bend your knees, and step, step together, Tadasana. Find your breath, soften your jaw, take a little pause. All right, let's get into some peak work. So, you can come back to face the normal way on your mat. Standing anywhere on your mat is fine, but please bring your big toes right together and zip up your inner thighs. So squeeze your legs towards one another. Inhale, sweep your arms up, or Bahastasana, reach through your fingertips. Exhale, sit low, Utkatasana. Now, look at your toes, and if you can't see them, sit more back and more down. See if you could lift and spread all of your toes. Sit a little lower, squeeze your legs together a little more, scoop your tail in and your low belly up. One more big breath, reach with your fingers. Mm, good, reach up. Release your arms, take a breath. Let's add on to that. Separate your feet about the distance of your hips, please. Bend your knees just like we did. So Utkatasana with hip distance feet. Switch your legs over to the left. So weight into the left leg. Pick your right foot up and cross at the knees. This is a great place for kickstand. Maybe your right toes flirt on the earth. If you have the range, you may play with wrapping the right top foot around the left calf. That's a lot. So no pressure to try to do that if it's not accessible. Kickstand is great. Hands to heart, squeeze your legs together, sit low, sit deep. Lift your chest, 
Lift your low belly away from your top right thigh. And then release. Uncross, stand tall. Other side, spread your toes. Bend your knees a little. Weight over to the right. Left leg picks up and over to cross at the knees. Left toes can serve as your kickstand. Absolutely. You could wrap around the back of the right calf as well. Regardless of where you are, sit low, sit deep. Squeeze your legs together. Hands to heart if possible. Lift your low belly up, up, up. Breathe and squeeze. Last breath. Mm. Release up and out. Can shake it out a little bit. Your legs can get a little break here when you do just the arms. Inhale, reach your arms up or Bahasasana. As you exhale, sweep your arms underneath you. So all the way around, right arm under, making your X, right arm under, wrapping at the outer shoulders, wrapping at the wrists, whatever works. Garudasana, eagle arms. Squeeze your arms together, lift your elbows up. Feel the nice wide spread across the upper back here. Lift your beak, your fingertips, a little bit more as you squeeze your arms together. Pull your belly back. And then inhale, release it, sweep up, reach up, or the hastasana. Let's go right into the other side. Left arm under right. Make your X, left arm under right. Hold outer shoulders with your palms or continue to wrap at your wrists, eagle arms. Squeeze your arms together, lift your elbows, and line with your shoulders, if not a little higher. Feel the nice wide spread across the upper back and squeeze your arms firm. Pull your low belly back, lift your fingertips a little bit more. Last breath. Inhale to release that, sweep your arms up, reach up. And then exhale, release your hands, arms by your sides. So, here we go, Garudasana. We're well prepped for this pose. So, hip distance in your feet. Let's get the legs organized first. Bend your knees a little bit, send your weight over to your left leg. Right leg lifts up, and you will cross at the knees. Same thing, find a kickstand if balance is tricky. Little float of your right toes on the earth, or wrap the right foot around the left calf. Now, squeeze your knees together, wherever you're at, Firm your inner thighs, so hug the midline. That'll help you from falling over. Then, if possible, sweep your arms up. And then sweep your right arm underneath your left arm. Find your X, right arm under, right arm under. And then outer shoulders hold or wrist cross. Garudasana. Once you've got a pose that's steady-ish, squeeze. Hug everything to the center. Lift your beak. Sit low. Find your breath. Mm. Slowly release. Wowza. Reach up. And exhale. Take a breath. All right. Last side. Last big effort. Separate your feet hip distant. Bend your knees a little. This time the left leg goes up and over the right. Cross at the knees. Find your little kickstand with your left toes or wrap the foot behind the right calf. You can stay right here. You don't need to add the arms. Squeeze your legs together, sit low in your seat. If you want to add the arms, reach up. This time, left arm under, left arm under. Hold out your shoulders or wrap at the wrists. Garudasana, eagle pose. Wherever you are, squeeze. Squeeze everything to the midline, lift your elbows a little bit, sit lower. Pull your low belly up, take one more breath, squeeze in. When you're ready to exit, unwind, reach up. And then release. Tadasana, take a breath. Really nice job, everybody. From here, I'll give you the option. So, um, I like downward facing dog, kind of as a symmetrical pose. 
You're also welcome to take child's pose. You could also just lay right down onto your back. So eventually we'll all meet supine. You can go right down to your back for now. Find a down dog, find child's pose. Whatever you need before we start to bring the energy down. And then when you're ready to transition, please don't let me rush you. We'll find our supine position. You can just rest comfortably in a position that's uh, comfortable for you here, whatever works. Let your back body be heavy. And begin to reconnect with your breath. And then from here, the feet on the floor, knees bent, please. We'll take just a really gentle bridge pose. So we did quite a bit of hip flexion, uh, just to lengthen out the front of the thighs a little. So arms down by your sides, palms face down. And then gently press into your feet. I'm not going to go super high. Just lift the front of your hips a little bit. Pelvis off the mat. Mm, stretch the knees a little bit forward. Lift a little bit higher. And if you want a little more shoulder opening, you could tuck your shoulders underneath you and that would allow the arms to spin palms face up. Take one more breath. And then slowly release that down. Pelvis back to the earth. Take your feet as wide as your mat, please. Your knees also as wide as your mat. And drop both knees over to the right. Come to the outer blade of your left foot, inner blade of your inner blade of your left foot, excuse me, outer blade of your right foot. And then come back through center, knees wide, feet stay wide, exhale, windshield wiper, knees to the left. You can gaze to the right. Inhale brings you to center, just a gentle unwind. Exhale, knees right, gaze left. Inhale, center. Exhale, gaze right, knees left. So you can do this a few more times, linking it with your breath, maybe holding for a little bit, whatever feels good in your body. And when you're ready, you'll complete another or two rounds of that and then just allow for yourself to come to center. Keep your feet wide, keep your knees wide. And if you haven't already, bring those arms up and overhead. Take a big round of breath just here in the center. Let your pelvis be heavy on the mat. And then setting up for Shavasana. So when I did this um, original planning of the sequence, I actually Shavasana in the pentacle pose. So you're almost making a star with your body. My feet are wider than the width of my mat and my arms are gonna go wide up and overhead in sort of a, a V shape. So we did a lot of hugging of the midline. Nice wide pentacle pose is a nice counter to all of that squeezing in. You're welcome to take traditional Shavasana if that's more comfortable for you. You can bring in some props, maybe support your rest if you want. Regardless of where you are, close your eyes and take a little tuck of your chin to your chest so the back of your neck is long. And please find your breath. And as we rest here for a few minutes in silence, I just encourage you to begin that absorptive, receptive uh, experience, allowing yourself to let practice seep in. And I'll guide you out when it's time. Enjoy your rest.
And so please begin to find the movement of your breath with your awareness. And take a moment to check in. Ideally, Shavasana would be much longer uh, than this, so please feel free to rest for a few more minutes. If you are looking to close practice formally with me, you can begin a little movement into the head, the hands, and the feet. And then with your movements getting a little bigger, let your breath get a little deeper. And eventually bend at the knees and you can roll up to either side. Pause, rest your head and your top arm and keep your eyes really soft. When you're ready, let your head hang, let your neck be really soft as you rise to a seat. And sit comfortably and rest the hands on the thighs. Close your eyes and stack up your bones. Feel your head over your heart, over your hips. Soften your jaw and soften your tongue. And then again, just being really absorptive, receptive to the experience of practice. How do you feel? How's your breath? How's the, the physical structure of your body and the quality of your awareness of your thoughts? And then using an inhalation, when you're ready to float hands to heart center, press your palms together, and if you'd like a small bow, chin to chest. So may this practice of yoga not only help us to have healthy and strong hips, really the whole circumference of the hips, but also allowing us to, to practice the pause, to practice the stilling, the calming that this practice offers so that we can find some of that pause when we're off our mat. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Really nice work. Namaste.